<laughs> are you ever going to explain that to the audience? I should. That these are the Florida verses. Wow! Yes! Everybody, and everybody gets a song. Anna, when she was young, she met Santa. And that's not how the story ends. They became best friends. And they gave out all the toys in the Northwest. Boy, isn't she the best. She's Santa's helper, Anna. When she was young, she met Santa. And they remain friends to this day. She's best friends with Santa Claus. And there's no clause in the friendship saying it'll end if they're rude. She's a pretty cool dude. We're talking about Anna. Anna's Ooh! not on the show! Anna's on the program, and that's her Florida verse right there. Everybody gets a song. The pride of Lake Forest Park, just outside of Seattle. The one, <laughs> the only, how are you doing, Anna Snudden, how are you? I'm so good. Better than I've been in my whole life. Wow. I love being inside all the time. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, good. It's, uh, it's a good time uh, to be inside. I'd say the best time, really. Yeah, yeah. Because your, your government is praising you for it. Everyone <laughs> is, is happy that my, my, I'm being an introvert. Have you, have you felt... Uh, very encouraged like to stay inside like when you tell people how how uh careful you're being uh, with your quarantine do they commend you or are they like oh yeah me too hmm. <clears throat> i think uh there's some people that you know there's a little bit of that quarantine gaslighting oh know? oh no like a little what? bit like what little bit. you know people who will kind of like uh you know kind of roll their eyes like oh sure. really like <laughs> You're fine. We're going to be fine. It's like, okay. Well, it's up to us. Uh, today, my guest, Anna, you've just heard from her. Uh, she's the pride of Lake Forest Park. She's also a influential contributor to the Walking Dead universe, <laughs> TWDU. Those shows would not make it on air if it were not for you, Anna. So thank you so much for uh for working so diligently and so hard on the everyone is welcome on that universe yeah uh <clears throat> we'll get back to quarantine in a little bit but uh, i like to do plugs up top uh just like joe buck and tony romo yeah i'm calling you out tony romo uh was uh, anna is there anything you'd like to plug uh, uh that you can drive our listeners to other than to watch the walking dead world beyond which will be on tv later this fall season world two. beyond love it uh, I plug in my friends' shows. Watch oh, Family yeah. Guy and Duncanville yeah. and yeah. Ted Lasso. Watch yeah. Ted Lasso and specifically pause in the credits for Sasha Garen. That's right. Oh, Sasha has been on this podcast. She has. And uh, she, yeah, I'm, oh, I love that show. That's a fantastic show. Yeah. That's so kind. Yeah, and. Uh, I like my coffee like. Quickly <laughs> becoming one of my favorite Instagram accounts. <laughs> That is, of I'm course, I'm gonna kiss ass. <laughs> I know that's great. That is, of course, referring to uh, the coffee Instagram uh, that I've started, uh, where I'm just, you know, telling people how I like my coffee, and <laughs> that'll, uh, you know, that my goal is to make that into a uh, coffee table book. Wouldn't that be fun? Yes. Yes. <laughs> make it the size of a coaster, so I can oh. put my coffee on it. Eh? Oh, that's so smart. <laughs> like the pages are coasters and you can just rip it out. That's even better. Whoa. Even better. Okay. Uh, yes. Now, this is, this turned from <laughs> a podcast into a brainstorming session. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Uh, yeah. Coasters. Uh, I hope I remember that later. Uh, so anyhow, back to the quarantine. It's yes. so, it's interesting. Um, in the quarantine, there are so many stages of it. Uh, but, uh, I feel at one stage, a great deal of people, friends of mine were fostering dogs and you just, you're, you are currently fostering a dog. Is that right? Yes. Yes, we are. 
And have you, uh, yeah, what's it like? It, I don't really know that what we're doing is called fostering even. She had a foster. We okay. a beautiful dog. She's a beautiful animal. Yeah. Uh, and her name is? We, her name is Mosey. Mm -hmm. She's a little too weenie. Adorable. <laughs> a Chewini, which is that the name? The official name? That is the name. Chihuahua slash Dachshund. It's a oh. Chewini. Oh my there god. There is a community of us online. Um <laughs> we haven't adopted her, but we are not technically fostering her. So really oh. she's just we kind of took her and we're waiting <laughs> until someone tells us to adopt. You her. stole her? And <laughs> you stole her and then once somebody notices, hey, we got a Chewini on the loose. We got a Chawini A wall. Then they're like, "Yeah, oh, we <laughs> we better go look for him." Wait, yeah. what you took her? Well, we we are on a trial, so we took her oh, from a foster. We're kind of giving it a go, but really, okay. we're putting in work. She's she's got like two different antibiotics she has to take. <laughs> she hasn't pooped in three days. Oh. she's she's work, but it's good work. She's sweet. Okay, so it's less of a hostage ransom situation more of an yes. es more of an escrow situation yes you're an escrow with this dog i i look Are you familiar I with understand the term escrow? escrow i've come close to buying homes so many times <laughs> uh yeah Have yes you we're escrowing her <laughs> we're that's we the official are term <laughs> We are in escrow with her. <laughs> uh, have you have you found yourself uh, speaking in uh, a, a, a higher register to your dog? Like, do you have a dog voice? That you oh, you gotta dog? have a dog voice. Yeah, what, you what, gotta. Mine's like, uh, oh, hey, buddy, hey, everyone's a buddy. Do you, what? What's yours? And what? What? What was? What, what's your um, dog voice? I mean, mine's soft. You know, like, oh, hey, girl. There's a. You know, it's a lot of like. I kind of drop my jaw. It's like, oh, don't talk about that. Yeah. You know, like no intelligible sounds. Yeah, exactly. They don't have to be full words. Uh, <laughs> oh gosh, speaking of quarantine, I was just thinking that. Oh, quarantine's weird because. Uh, you you're back to work on uh, the Walking Dead in the Walking Dead universe, um, mm -hmm. but. For a time there, if, if, you're, if, if someone's not working, they could have a whole day where they just talk to their grandma. Has this happened to you where you found yourself only, you've only talked to like one person or almost nobody in a full day? Cause, and then like, what happened with me is I called my grandma earlier today. Then before we were set to do this podcast, I realized that's the only person I've talked to all day long. And I found myself talking like her <laughs> like I, I was texting a friend and I was like, God, and I literally said, I was talking like my grandma. I was like, I have, uh, I just had the most delicious soup. And when I say delicious, I mean delicious. And that's <laughs> something my grandma would say. <laughs> have you found you? Have you found yourself in these like situations uh, or no? I have a, I have a, I don't know if it's a bad habit, probably to other people, but I have a habit of talking to myself like before quarantine began. So that's cool though. My voice is never out of use, but I, I have, <laughs> I have found myself. I mean, I live with my boyfriend, so he's really, I'll talk at him and he'll kind of work on his computer. <laughs> he'll that's nod. Really, he'll that's nod why we got the dog. <laughs> <laughs> to, for tiebreakers. Like what should we yeah. eat tonight? I don't know. I don't know. And then, you know, Mosey picks a Thai food. It's always Thai food with this. Always Thai food. The you news. went, you're, uh, you went, you, uh, you made a big choice early on in quarantine and you visited your family, right? You were up in uh, uh, the Seattle area for a while. Yeah, we, uh, mid April, we decided yeah. to, my boyfriend and I um, decided to, basically it went beyond visiting. It was going to be like a month, maybe six weeks, turned into three long months. Three months, living, yeah. Three months of living at my parents' house um in lake forest park which was great and also sometimes not as great but you know that lets me know that uh your parents will definitely be listening to this <laughs> <laughs> oh i could tell it to their face there's no there's no secrets in our house <laughs> uh, you know i no I, I i suppose not what was it like what was it like having your boyfriend in your 
Is this your childhood home or had they moved since? This is uh, my childhood home. Yeah. My parents, yeah. my parents have lived in the same house since I was six months old. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And I, I don't even want to talk about the day they get rid of it because I will implode. <laughs> um, yeah. It will be brutal. But, uh, you know, it's interesting when the day to day life, like I have best friends who spend a lot of time at my parents' home growing up, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's just something about someone seeing it the way you're seeing it all yeah. the time. Gives them a little insight into why, why this is the way this is. is. Yeah. Referring to myself. Right, right. Did you have any reservations uh, at the beginning? Like, oh my gosh. Uh, well, you didn't initially plan to be up there for that long, but no. did you have any reservations uh, at the beginning of it? Like, wow, he's going to, you know, see behind the curtain here. <laughs> uh a little bit but i mean my family is very loud and very are i don't want to say argumentative we love to yeah. playfully bicker but for other people sitting in i would say probably is terrifying for them uh, this is so fascinating to me and the reason why is because i've only ever introduced my grandma and my mom uh to I think two of my girlfriends and one of them was not technically my girlfriend <laughs> uh just someone I was hooking up and the second woman uh threw herself off the Grand Canyon so not a good track right now I'm just kidding she fell but she oh my what? <laughs> she is dead <laughs> I don't think they're related but I was always so nervous to introduce anybody that I was dating to my uh to my family just because yeah we're we can be argumentative but that's it took me a, a long time to realize that that was our language like my mom yeah. loves to yell but that's just her way of speaking normally and my grandma my grandma is always just so like what are you doing that for like what's the point of that you know and she they love to argue but that's their language you know yeah. so i was like oh god i can't bring somebody into this and then would you say your family did your family have those quirks as well or no oh my god my family is insane we are like <laughs> just a, a melting pot of neuroses like oh my god but i love them i love my family and they are like my house was always the spot where my friends would come so oh it's kind cool of like that's where everyone came they loved my family they love my parents because my parents are really social love people um, so pretty early on, I got used to just like, all right, this is how it is. Everyone's going to see it. Everyone's going to hear it. Like, what am I? Yeah. Gonna... Nothing to hide. Yeah. That's exactly. Cool. Oh, that's so neat. And you, you had the house where like, if everybody wanted to like hang out, they would hang out at your house. Yes. Yeah. We had a weird house, a lot of weird nooks and crannies. Oh, what made it like, like weird shadowy corners? We had, yeah. Yes. We had a uh, three story or four stories, I guess, with an ad. It's three stories. And in the basement, there sure. is... Three stories is more relatable. Yeah. <laughs> I, <didn't say> <laughs> I grew up in a three-story house. <laughs> in our basement, there is this, like, and what looks basement. like a wood... <laughs> that is one of the stories. Is that kind oh. of story? It's the foundation. <laughs> uh, in the basement, there's, like, a wooden wall. But one of the panels opens up to a hidden storage room which is like it's like it's a decent Whoa. size yeah it's like 20 feet by maybe 15 feet what would you store up there like uh oh it's like all of our baby stuff and my mom's wedding dress you know the stuff that we just throw in the corner got um, it okay 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 but we also had what we called the nook which oh. I made my friends hang out in. It was like in between the stairway to our basement. There's like a little landing. There's mm -hmm. a tiny little kind of like Harry Potter door. And Ooh. then- like a, like, like a triangular kind of It like... wasn't triangular, but it was just a yeah. square. Okay, okay. You open it up and it was like the middle of the house. So it's like, wow. you can see all the way to the end, but it's just concrete. Like it's maybe four feet tall. Yeah. And it goes forever. And I would like put bean bags in there and be like, this is like our cool hangout spot. We're in the nook. There's like spiders and it's horrible. <laughs> no lights, but. 
Oh I my gosh. Cool. Yeah, no, that is cool. I, uh, I didn't have one of those places growing up. Uh, I just, it was, um, for a while there, me and my mom were sharing a room in a condo and I was always like really protective of my, my place just to like invite people over just cause yeah, like, like I, I just, I was like, I don't think you'll get it here. You know, like, you'll just, you just won't get it. And like, what's to get, but like, I don't know. My mom's yeah. always yelling. My grandma's always like, eh, so I was like, I don't want <laughs> She's you She's always going on about the soup. About some kind of soup. Yeah. The soup's delicious. And let me tell you, when I say delicious, <laughs> I mean delicious. I was like, all right, great. Uh, this is what I've turned into. But I definitely wasn't ashamed. But uh, uh, oh man, that is so cool to have that experience growing up. When you were, when typically when you visit home, mm-hmm. it's usually around the holidays, right? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Do, do you find yourself going into those old habits of like, hey, let's all hang out at my place or like, hey, let's all get drunk at uh, you know, the place we used to go or, or, or let's hang out at such, such a place? Oh, yeah. My, when, whenever I'm in town, my best friends, it's like, okay, it's high school again and we're going to have a sleepover and we've got plenty of beds, but we're all going to sleep in the full bed. So it's me and like my two other best friends and we're, none of us are going to sleep well, but we need to be together because that's how it's always been. Oh, you're having um, adult sleepovers? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> do other people not i guess you're a man like my yeah. best friends it's like oh yeah we we have to we have to have a sleepover, a sleepover. um the, <laughs> the only sleepover i can remember uh is this guy i i slept in the same bed as this guy named zach and uh he he promised me he was gay and he promised me he wouldn't try and mess around with me in the bed and i was like ah fine whatever <laughs> and i woke up and he kissed me on the cheek and i was like that was nice thank you that's a pleasant way to wake up <laughs> i want i would ask for that that's pleasant a service little, yeah pleasant little kiss on the cheek all right well a little kiss. you brought up friends and uh this gets us into our first segment uh you know uh, it's called slang so in the in the Northwest, there doesn't seem to me to be a very strong accent and compared to other parts of the United States, say New York, say Southern California, say the South. Now, is there an accent and uh, what kind of slang were you guys using? Or you have like shorthand for certain terms or, or things uh, growing up? I would say... Seattle has no accent. We are, I don't know what it is about us. We're very intentional, intentional about the way we oh. say things. And Lake Forest and Park think, is how far outside of Seattle? Lake Forest, okay. I lived in Lake Forest Park growing up. I have yeah. to say this because people from Seattle yeah. would call me out. Okay, okay. Technically, I'm like four blocks north of the Seattle city limits. <laughs> oh, that's Seattle. See? Yes, to everyone else, to, uh, to people from, you know, California, they don't give a flying F yeah. where that is, but people care, okay. Um, sure, sure. So we don't have an accent. There is no right. accent. Got it. Yeah, there is, and, there is no accent. Yeah. No, we can, you can kind of go anywhere and, you know, it's like being off the grid. <laughs> Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I could go, I could go to the East Coast or somewhere and like, you can't be immediately um, kind of prejudged about who you are, where you're from. Um, Interesting. Yeah. How, uh, uh, before we get into the slang, what would identify a, uh, a Seattle resident from somebody else just like kind of walking down the street? Uh, Do you know? I would say if it was raining. Yeah. Seattleite would be walking without an umbrella. No umbrellas. No umbrellas. That's fascinating. You don't need an umbrella. Just what, like a, 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 your, pa- your Patagonia with the hood? North Face, Patagonia. It, everyone had the North Face like windbreakers, you know? Yeah. Um, they went up to like your face, your upper lip, and they could just fully, can, fully seal you in there. And you, um, you're fine. I mean, otherwise you just don't need anything. It's, just it's like a Kenny from South Park situation. Yeah. It's like escrow. It's. <laughs> Do you not know who Kenny from South Park is? I don't like South Park. <laughs> you don't like it at all? It's fine. I just didn't grow up with it. You, know? you don't. You don't like. The, you don't like the humor. I don't like the. Actually, the humor is fine. I don't oh. like the visual style. I don't like the art style. Interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that turns you off. Yeah, I guess, that's I what guess turns right. me off. <laughs> 
I guess so. Yeah, I guess I'm like that way in terms of um, some multicams, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Ah, I've seen this or like, I feel like this has been done. And you're, you're a big fan of Cheers. Is that right? Big fan. Yeah. Bigger fan of Frasier, but big fan of Cheers. And a big fan of Frasier as well. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, now, okay. <laughs> so what kind of, uh, what kind of slang did you guys have growing up? Do you have short term or shorthand for anything? Or what was- say We don't have slang. anything like iconic. Right. But growing up, and I'm sure this was in other places, but we said hella. Mm. Everything was hella. Everything was hella. Everything was hella. And legit, okay. but that was more of like a universal thing. I, I don't know. I, no, um, no, not legit. Okay. Hella, well, then hella, legit. Legit and hella. Uh, yeah. So, hella, yeah, is kind of all Northwest. Uh, I've I've talked to some people from San Francisco. I think it like kind of started there and just kind of spread mm, out a little bit. Uh, and then legit, like, how would you use legit? Would you be like, how would you use legit? legit is was cool like oh, oh it's legit it's on the level like legit means like a substitute for cool yeah like other than wow. like this like you you can be assured that this thing i'm talking about like it's been it's been double checked it's cool it's legit it's legit oh that's legit <laughs> i, I love, hate you, it i'm back in high school <laughs> <laughs> would you say hey i'm going to this party later it's legit yeah you probably wouldn't say it until you're at the party. Because you wouldn't <laughs> know if it was legit. legit. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that the party is legit. <laughs> um what would we say? We would say we would just say, is it cool? I think. We wouldn't have what would we have a replacement for cool in Florida? I think uh I know low key is more of like a Southern California thing. We would say, well, it's like it's crocodile rocking. That's you guys, right? <laughs> it's, no, alligators. Get it oh, straight. Damn it. Sorry, I'm from the Pacific Northwest. You're you're canceled. Was that not clear? <laughs> you're canceled. Uh, <laughs> legit, yeah. So like, oh, hey, I'm gonna try this uh, new Italian place, Paisanos. It's legit. Would you say like? Oh my god, their meatballs are places? legit. God, that's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. It's cool. Oh yeah, everything's it's cool. Legit. It's legit. Legit, legit. Yeah. legitimate. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I dig that. I appreciate that. Uh, did you guys have any, like, do you guys have any weird, t like, card games growing up or, like, games that you guys would play? My family are big board game people, but okay. when we would go camping, which we did every year, we would, like, we're big charades people, and we would play okay. improv games, so we would play press conference, oh, stuff like that. Fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and catchphrase. Oh, my God. Thanks. That's so that's so neat because you you had I felt like your house was like the entertainment house whether you had guests or not, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's so It fun. was easier with guests cuz it was gets more volatile when it was just my family. <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're, we are not allowed to play Monopoly. We haven't played Monopoly as a family for like 20 years. Really? Because what what would happen with Monopoly? Uh, the last time we played Monopoly, my brother was so angry at me for not making a deal with him that he thought was a good deal. Yeah. That he locked himself in the bathroom. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's so intense. <laughs> we haven't played Monopoly since. Since then. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> But you, <laughs> what was the deal? Do you remember the deal? Like, I, I don't even remember. I, I actually do. Monopoly. Do you? Okay, what was the deal? Well, I was young. So my Sorry. logic was like, oh, I don't like the color of that space. So I don't want it. Right. And he's like, I will give you one real human dollar if you trade me whatever your thing is. I can't remember it. And I was like, eh, what am I going to do with a dollar? I'm like nine. Um, and he got so upset at you know, at that point, I wasn't making the deal because, like, I enjoyed seeing how distraught he was. Oh, my God, you savage. Things, yeah. <laughs> things imploded after. Yeah. Were your parents, like, do the deal? Keep, you know, let's keep keep the water calm. Or were they, I like, know in the memory of them, they're just in the periphery. But I am uh, locked in on my brother. <laughs> All I know it was him and me, you know. It was Shark and, Tank. And never since then. 
what how uh how long did it uh did it eventually take for the the buffer to wear off when your your boyfriend was up in seattle with you that's a good question oh a few hours <laughs> really <laughs> maybe a few hours no kidding really maybe, maybe a couple days i think a couple days because it, it does not take long what 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 brought down the curtain was it dad walking around in his underwear or like was your mom just like you know, like, hey, what did he? Did your mom just burp in front of your boyfriend? My mom is a saint. Him? Sure, she's only recently. We've been dating for like over two years. She's only recently come to calling him my boyfriend. Oh, she's what always was he had for? a weird thing. My friend, my partner, like okay. she won't quite say boyfriend. She's just never really liked the term. But really, so oh, she okay. she finally came around. She had to kind of warm up to it, but um, she she's. She loves him, but I would say it was just probably the first argument we, we must have had <laughs> that he was in the room for, which I, uh, I'm telling you, it could not have been more than a day. Family, you know, family arguments really aren't arguments. You know, it's just like, hey, figure it out. What were you guys, what were you guys arguing about? Do you remember exactly? God, no. God only knows. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, we can do it over anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. We love it. And uh, this is, uh, uh, brings us to our next segment, he Headlines, which is loved by all the listeners here. Woo -doo 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 -doo. I will read a headline and you, in the first round, we will argue whether or not it happened in our respective home states. And the second round, we'll argue why it's impossible that could have happened in our home states in the third round. You will, uh, you will guess. Now, what, what sort of stakes do you want to put on this, Anna? Well, uh, since I love a deal that includes $1. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Is that a stake? Okay, let's bet. Let's oh, bet I, here's, a I've single got a stake. Uh -huh. I'll put you in escrow if you're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you, guess, if you guess correctly, I go into escrow. And if you guess, <laughs> yeah. incorre if you guess incorrectly. Uh, uh, I'll give you a dollar. Uh, okay, fair. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> So hackers, okay, this is the headline. Hackers broke into a water treatment facility, gained access to a internal ICS platform, changed chemical levels, making the water unsafe to consume. Now, this is a real headline that either happened oh in Washington State or Florida. Uh, according to a press conference today, hackers broke into a water treatment facility, gained access to a internal ICS platform, changed chemical levels making the water unsafe to consume now why do you believe that that could have happened in washington state hackers <laughs> that's us baby the key term hackers <laughs> the key term is hackers all right first of all let me just for all the people like get it down to the basics sure microsoft oh right? yeah We've yeah got microsoft that's computers, okay? <laughs> also, people's, people spend a lot of time indoors in Seattle. True. People spend a lot of time indoors not <laughs> talking to people. Like, I know there's kind of like the Seattle freeze. We like our time alone. Um, that seems okay. absolutely reasonable that there would be someone who would have the, the knowledge and the skill to do something just, it's, it's like pure, just anarchy. Do you think, would you say that one of the main exports in Washington state, other than maybe coffee is hackers? Coffee, apples and hackers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. That's right. That's what you're known for. Coffee, yep. apples, hackers. Yes. In that order. Growing up, did you like, did you, do you remember there were, if there were like specific classes that catered to the idea that, yeah, well, Microsoft's here and you know, all these tech companies are around uh amazon is growing like like yeah w would that happen because in florida we would have like agricultural classes oh, wow. available and i feel like that's not you know for, for like people that wanted to become farmers and, and stuff yeah. like that uh would you guys have something catered to the region yeah i think like there are more tech heavy like it's it's more competitive to get into those kind of like degrees in seattle um and like coding is something that people often do like at a younger age and that's like oh. becoming a more popular thing my dad worked at microsoft so um i was never interested in it but uh i felt 
like I had a duty to like rep Microsoft. Yeah, so it's like, of I, I bleed PC, but I don't <laughs> know anything about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're doing the Zoom right now, and you're. Uh, I'm a little nervous because uh, you're still running Windows 95. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just out of yeah, a point just, of pride. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. I just love the little the logo. You know, old. Oh school. yeah. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Yeah. Uh, why did this happen in Florida? Um, you know why I think this might have happened in Florida? It, boredom. Uh, I think, <laughs> so. you know, it's like that uh, Jurassic Park thing. They, they wondered if they could, not if they should. And they're, wow. you know, maybe, the, maybe we're talking about like the two most, the two smartest people in florida that are they also, found each other they found each other they decide on like you know reddit or 4chan yeah. they decided to become uh become hackers and they're like yeah let's mess up like where do you get your water oh yeah bottles yeah me too uh let's <laughs> let's mess let's mess with those idiots that are taking baths and showers that's what it really is this is revenge yeah. that's it this is revenge Okay. The hackers have for anyone that bathes on a regular basis or drinks water. Uh, that's where I'm standing by. Now, why, in your opinion, Anna, do you believe mm -hmm. that this uh, could have not happened in Washington State? I would say that people in Washington and Seattle specifically um, have a deep respect for water. Oh. Okay. Just because it falls from the sky? It, it is our manna from heaven. <laughs> it's so it sustains us. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think that like we are very like progressively environmental in Seattle. Mm. I mean, I like to think that. Um, I grew up in a bubble, obviously, but sure. um, I think that a small people, bubble outside of the Seattle bubble. A, a four small blocks, bubble, four blocks north of Seattle's <laughs> bubble limit. <laughs> so many bubbles. <laughs> So many moments. Like, I'm from Seattle, but, like, I'm from, like, Forest Park. Right, 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 right. Um, yeah, I don't think that – I think that, that someone in Seattle would be like, I have the skills, and I found a loophole into the water treatment facility, mm. but out of respect for humankind, I'm going to fix that loophole. I'm not going to mess with the chemicals or anything. Like, that's the kind of attitude I would hope Seattleites would have. Yeah, and uh, people from Seattle are Seattleites, right? We could say? Seattleites. Yes. That's so fascinating. So you think with the power to manipulate something for evil, a Seattleite would say, no, not for my fellow man. I, uh, I, will, I will only use this, uh, this knowledge for good. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least neutral. <laughs> at least neutral. At least, like yeah. Lawful neutral. <laughs> okay. Fair. Wow, yeah. that's, uh, that's very insightful to uh, the Seattle person. Uh, Thank you. I think the, way, the reason why there's no way this happened in Florida is um, I don't, for one, I don't think. Uh, you guys treat your water. <laughs> no, I don't think there's any, yeah, there, it's just coming from a well or a swamp. But also <laughs> there, like, there's no tech, there can't be any sort of like technical uh, weight to produce water in Florida. I've, I've, I still think we're using wells and hand cranks. <laughs> okay. And, and a yeah. filter system with like alligator poop. You know, if I said this, I said this before, but the only clean water in Florida uh, is the ice cubes in a margarita. All the other water oh. is like just swamp water or like, you know, you're, you're, you're walking out of the shower dirtier than you walked in. Ugh. Let me tell you that. Um, Okay. And, and yeah, yeah. I just don't, I just don't see them having the, the technology to change yeah. the ICS platform. <laughs> what? We all know how, what it takes to change the ICS. Well, it takes at least two weeks of escrow and a couple <laughs> dollar bills, if you know what I'm saying. Don't talk to me about escrow. <laughs> <laughs> especially, Please. especially dog escrow. I don't get me started. Oh, I Please. know. I don't want to. I don't want to. All right, Anna, with all the information that okay. uh, we seemingly, with all the information that we just seemingly made up, yes. what, yes. which way are all you leaning? <laughs> exactly. Which way are you leaning? And um, what, uh, what, what is your final answer on wh wh where this <sighs> happened geographically? You know, I'm gonna say that this happened in Seattle. 
I okay. think that the technical aspect of it seems like something no well can't say no offense that's uh, <laughs> inherently offensive i just think that this this is something someone in seattle did despite your claims that all seattle people are good yes. good people and have yes. the best intentions well, is it from seattle or is it washington state washington state okay well i definitely washington <laughs> oh okay <laughs> you can only vouch for people from Seattle or yes. from four, four blocks, blocks from outside. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Well, I am pleased to reveal that this did happen in the great state of Florida. Yay! <laughs> so you you were bamboozled. You were uh, Dang it. you were tricked there, and I guess you Happy owe me to be wrong. You owe me one escrow. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> I'll email it to you. Yeah, this happened in Florida, and the news broke uh, on Monday uh, the 8th uh, of February, uh, which is the day of recording. How wild is that? Um, that uh, water is uh, controlled by this, like, program, this app, essentially. Well, apparently by, like, Greg and Steve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Florida. <laughs> Greg and Steve are just running Florida. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anna, uh, before we get out of here, uh, it's one last thing, one good thing. Boop, boop, boop. If I was dropped in Seattle, or maybe let's say four blocks outside four blocks of Seattle, <laughs> <laughs> what's, uh, what's one thing that I should know? What's one last thing? What's one thing I should know? Oh, one thing. I feel like I didn't talk about Seattle much, but you know. Whatever. Tell me all about it. Tell me more about it. Um, Lake Forest Park. I absolutely love Lake Forest Park. I would love to live there and raise my kids there someday. But um, I would say you're dropped into Seattle. You've got one day. You got to eat some food. You got to go to Dick's. Yeah, you got to go to Dick's. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm in Georgia. Put us on to Dick's. Yes. I have to say Dick's. I'm legally obligated really? as a Seattleite to tell you that Dick's is legit. I love it. All right. Yes. Great. I, I, I will 100% check that out. I've been been suggested twice now you know now you yeah. got to do it yes go to the chihuly glass exhibit it's a beautiful museum only seattle has it now like, what's that uh it's a museum of glass blown art and it's just like it's mind-blowing i mean like huge pieces of art that it's gorgeous seattle loves their museums we love to be very quiet in places and very reverent <laughs> very reverent over things like history and art you know okay you got to take a ferry take this is going to be a long day for you take yeah. a ferry eat dicks <laughs> sorry <laughs> you gotta <laughs> laugh it's a goof on all of us it's it the is, one it it's the one thing that we uh is there a like guy a is there a guy named dick or it's just like uh we'll get them all with this gag I have no idea hmm. i have no idea We'll find out. So wait, yeah. back to the glass blowing museum. Yes. Uh, now, are you you? Did, <laughs> now, when you say glass blowing museum, are yeah. you using coded language to just say this is a museum filled with bongs? Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> you could probably, if you were trapped in there and all you had to survive was weed, which Seattle baby. Um, <laughs> it's legal up there, yeah. It's yeah, it is. All right. Um, yeah, you could use a lot of art as bongs. I think. Is that the purpose of art? Maybe. Block ass. <laughs> Turn into bongs. Who would you ask? Uh, Chihuly. That's the guy who does, makes the art. Or one of the docents. The last time I went to the museum, I actually saw one of the docents was someone I went to high school with. So I'll ask him. Wow. And what's the name of that museum again? The Chihuly Glass Museum. Chihuly. <laughs> that sounds like, that sounds, that, I mean, that sounds like a great, yeah. And Chihuly, of course, from uh, the famous uh, Mexican hot <laughs> sauce. Yes. Yeah. Well, that is glass blown. <laughs> it is technically, yeah. What a grift. What a grift. Oh, yeah. The most famous, wouldn't this be incredible? The most famous glass blown art museum. And it's just bottles of hot sauce and bongs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I do hate to burst your bubble, but that is Cholula. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's close. Go. It's but close. it is very close. <laughs> and if, you're, if, you're, if you're in Seattle and you decide to go four blocks north, go to Lake Forest Park. Mm -hmm. Go to the Lake Forest Park Town Center. We just call it LFP. It's got everything you could possibly need for just a lovely little day. 
LFP for a nice day. Sounds like yep. Sounds like a calm little uh, little picnic yeah. area. Yeah. It's our like town center, so it's where our Albertsons is. You got the oh, Baskin wonderful. Robbins, Starbucks, third place books, like shitty little bar and grill. You're gonna love it. It's well, great. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. I love it. You've given tons of insight and knowledge as to. Uh, how many floors my house has as to how many floors your house has exactly how far from seattle you grew up but i do not want you to leave this podcast without uh giving all of your information so if there's if there's something that you feel like you didn't say about seattle please lay it on us uh for all those uh wayward travelers uh heading to the northwest um some other facts maybe some, some more information some that other facts you want to get you like something or anything that you yeah. want to add additionally I would say Seattle is perfect because it has everything. And oh. Seattle is absolute paradise for three months of the year. Which three July months? to September. Okay. Seattle is literally paradise. It is just like, go to any water. It's going to be glistening from the sun. It's not oh. too hot. I mean, it's fabulous. But you got to be tough for the rest of the year because it is demoralizing. I think seasonal affective disorder was born there some hackers yeah. made it they upped the <laughs> chemicals created they, sad they hacked into the uh the truman weather machine yeah and uh yeah they made it made it rain for three months out of the year so yeah so that that's what you look forward to you look forward to those uh late summer months right yeah yeah i mean it's i love seattle and that's i love incredible. being four blocks north you'll know <laughs> that you're out by my house when you pass by uh, the legs, which are the legs to our strip club, just oh. down, down the street from my house. Now, what are these um, legs? Go on about these legs. They are, <laughs> it's just a billboard with legs. So it's like, you oh. know, little, little, um, I can't believe I forgot the name of the strip club. I feel devastated, but yeah, yeah. someone is going to text me later and pissed. Um, but Let's that's see. how you'll know you're near my house. Okay. A giant pair of fishnet legs. Huh. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I wish I knew that it, it, are, are strip clubs popular in, um, in Seattle, in the Washington area. Cause I've been to some funky strip clubs in Portland and now I know that they're your mortal enemy, but, uh, yeah, uh, they, they do have that going on and Florida. I mean, there are some <laughs> cities that are just defined by strip clubs, Cocoa beach, Daytona defined Tampa Bay, defined by strip clubs like that is really? the culture. that is the culture there yeah 100 oh percent. is that is that a like a a, a a interesting scene up there or is that part of the culture mm. or not really i wouldn't say so we've got cool bars but uh it's deja vu by the way deja vu showgirls Finally. oh there you go um Ooh. that's the vu. legs legs that's the legs yeah, okay. but no, I wouldn't say that it is. I think we've got like lots of kitschy little bars, like 24 hour restaurants, go to Best Cafe. That was like my theater kid, hang out, open all night. Um, oh, awesome. Like there's lots of places that are like just right for a small hang. Oh, yeah. I remembered some slang. Yeah. Kickback. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a West Coast. That's a West Coast yeah. thing. Okay. All we right. would have, so that's how you, what, what would kickback mean? Kickback would mean what? A kickback was like in college, we didn't have like part, we had parties occasionally, but mm -hmm. most of the time we had kickbacks. Where it's like, you know, someone's coming over, they're bringing like some craft beer. We're going to listen to some Sufjan and we're just going to, we're going to have a kickback. You don't kick back. It's not a verb, but you engage in a kickback. Right. That, that, that's more telling of uh, the tone of the party, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what would happen in Florida. We would have, hey, I'm going to, uh, you'd ask me, hey, uh, uh, I'm going to this party. Uh, do you want to come? Oh, what kind of party is it? Is it a party or is it a rager? So <laughs> everybody would always look for rager, but you would have to let them down by saying, nah, it's just a party. So there would be rager, then there would be just a party, and then they'd be like, ah, nah, it's more chill. Wow. So it's either rager party, rager wow. party, party party, or chill party. And even at a chill party, we would get what's considered a uh, a party ball, which is like half a keg. And that's like 12, 10 to 12 beers per person. <laughs> is it a ball? 
Yeah, it's a ball. I think it's a, a, a big wild. Um, it it looks like a, a a fish fish bowl. Wow. Well, where I went to school, the city was called the city of subdued excitement, literally, which I feel like kind of encapsulates everything about like Northwest. Yeah, subdued excitement. Subdued excitement. Keep why do it you to th- yourself? Yeah. Why do you think that is? Is that why? Why do, do you think that's because people there are so uh, so modest, or and they want to keep you know they don't want to put somebody else down by being so excited, or do you think they just don't know how to handle their feelings? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say a little bit of both, maybe. Yeah, we. I think people have their circles in mm-hmm. Seattle. You have your people, and it takes a lot to expand outside of that. I would say I went to private school, so I never really learned how to make friends <laughs> other than the people <laughs> I've known since literally kindergarten. They were just there with you. Yeah. The, the subdued excitement, that is definitely a trait of the, the Northwest. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. It's got to just be being kind to the fellow man, right? Like, like, yeah. Oh, I don't want to rub it in your face, but like, I'm an escrow. I'm an escrow. It's not the first time, probably won't be the last time. All right, whoa, geez, when you say it like that. Uh, <laughs> there she is, Anna. Thank you so much for joining me today yeah. on the Florida Versus podcast. Uh, you are an absolute delight. Thanks for taking us through Lake Forest Park and Floridians. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you next time.